coming up on show five, coming up on show 546, a shorter range Audi e-tron is coming. What are the best EVs that money can buy? We'll find out. And EV conversion kits. Those stories and many more. We're also talking about a new company called Fresco Motors, BP investing in charging infrastructure, a new plug-in coming from Vauxhall, and much more. Thank you for listening today. My name is Martin Lee. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Your edition for Friday, 2nd of August. Uh, this is what you've missed in the last 24 hours. Thank you to myev.com for helping me make this show. If you're in the USA and you're in the market for either buying or selling, either way, or maybe you're just EV curious and you're all about learning, then check it out, myev.com. Brilliant second version of the website coming very soon as well. They are constantly working to make it better all the time. Really impressive stuff. Thank you to a new Patreon supporter, Dave Martin, who signed up in the last 24 hours as a new supporter. Dave Martin, thank you. And if you're a Patreon supporter, well, you would have been billed on the first of the month. So thank you very much for your continued support. Names coming on Sunday as always. A new shorter range Audi kicks us off then with the news today. And Audi's already introducing a new version of its e-tron quattro electric SUV in Europe with smaller batteries. It's going to be a short range model with a 71 kilowatt hour battery pack in place of the Big Brother 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, says Green Car Reports. Well, Audi confirmed that the new model won't be sold in the US. It's only going to be in Europe, and here it'll be rated for 186 miles on the WLTP test cycle versus 249 for the larger one. Well, the e-tron 50, as it's going to be called, as opposed to the e-tron 55. The e-tron 50 won't get quick charging. They're not giving it 150 kilowatt charge speeds that the other e-trons are known for. Though with a smaller battery, they say that you won't need to charge it as quickly because it would fill up quicker naturally. Well, the e-tron Quattro is the first car on the market capable of using 150 kilowatt CCS DC fast chargers being installed, installed by anything non-Tesla in Europe and the US. No, the e-tron 50 can charge up to 120 well, that's still about 100 miles of range in 30 minutes. The e-tron 50 will have a smaller motor as well, 308 horsepower rather than 402. Audi says acceleration will be 0 to 60 in 7 seconds. Top speed, 118 miles an hour. Deliveries of the new model are expected to start in the first quarter of 2020, including here in the UK. It's going to cost about $12,000 or £10,000 less than the big brother e-tron 55. Lots of things, if I editorialise this a bit from my personal opinion that could be going on here, the research shows that people aren't buying the car that's more expensive and they needed to bring something to market quickly, but the plans would have been in the pipeline for years on this, so it's not a knee-jerk. But also, you wonder if it's partly to do with the battery shortage for everyone but Tesla, and simply making cars with smaller batteries means you get to make more cars. And I imagine the margin of making a car is better than making one car with a bigger battery sell, you know, the proportion of, of more cars, but with smaller batteries and well, you could make more money. I don't know, but there is a battery shortage happening in the world and it makes sense. Look, a lot of this is as well. I know that there's halo cars and people will say, oh, the e-tron itself, the original one wasn't good enough. Now they're making an even smaller one with even shorter range. What will the efficiency be like? It's about use case, right? If you only ever do 150 miles or 200 miles round trip commute, what's the problem? It's got 186 miles on the WLTP test cycle from a 71 kilowatt hour pack. Again, that's not great. You're talking the kind of mileage that some people get out of their small city cars like the Renault Zoe from a 40 or 41 kilowatt hour pack. Similar kind of mileage. Anyway, uh, we'll wait to see when we get more news about that smaller Audi e-tron, the e-tron 50. Big news, always big news when we get news of a new car coming. And uh, no doubt that over coming days and weeks and months, you and I will chew this one over a little bit more. But let's move on with the news. Great Business Insider article I found today all about 11 of the most powerful EVs that money can buy. If money's no object, what would you buy? In no particular order, we'll start with the Neo EP9. This is first on the list. The car has a top speed of 195 miles an hour, 1,341 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.7. Six of the 16 have been sold already at $1.2 million each. Wow. 
Moving on to the Tesla Model S. Performance, 0-60, even quicker, 2.4. Tesla says top speed of 163. And if you're going the performance version, what's that now? 345-odd miles? I know it changes every so often. Uh, of the current performance Model S. What about Rimac? Well, the Rimac C underscore 2. <laughs> Following the Concept 1. This is a beast. 1,914 horsepower. 403 miles range, 0 to 60 in 1.85 seconds, 256 miles an hour top speed. If you want to buy one and you ask how much it is, it's a sign you can't afford one. What about the Genovation GXE? I haven't heard about this. The Genovation GXE is a converted all-electric Chevy Corvette with a horsepower rating of 800, holds the record at the minute for the fastest street legal EV at 209 miles an hour. That's new on me. I love learning new stuff. What about the Tesla Roadster they add to the list? Yeah, top speed, 250, 0 to 60, 1.9. $200,000 makes it, makes it affordable. I know it doesn't make it affordable for you and I, but in this list, it makes it affordable for that kind of performance. 620 miles, the longest of any on this list that I'll talk about. You know what? The more I think about the Roadster... This is from an armchair commentator, someone that knows next to nothing. The more I think about it, the more I think they released the Roadster. They looked at their roadmap of where they think they'll be in three years' time, and those are the specs they gave it. Because I don't think they could build right now the Roadster today. They couldn't, they couldn't retool a factory and build one now. I think they are waiting for, or they're not waiting, of course, they're working incredibly hard, like the Maxwell acquisition new battery densities, efficiencies, to get that amazing top speed, amazing acceleration, to do it with $200,000 price tag and 620 mile range. I don't think, I don't know, look, I don't know. But the more, I, you know, if, if you're anything like me, in your quiet moments, you sometimes, your mind wanders. And I think about the Roadster a fair bit. I know, I need to get out and have a life more. But I think, I think when they announced it, they knew they couldn't do it at that point. They couldn't do it today for that price. But they will when they release it because they're so confident of where they're going. That is my two penneth. Let's get back to the news. Aspark Owl is next on the list. 1,150 horsepower supercar. 174 miles an hour. 180 miles of range. Can you buy one? No. It's still in testing. What about the Porsche Taycan, formerly known as the Mission E, which is a far better name Porsche. Uh, the Taycan will be their first fully electric car. They were targeting 20,000 units in the first year of production. That's now. Because of interest, 30,000 reservations already. They are increasing their production rates. And what about the Dendrobium D1? Another one on the list that I hadn't heard of. If we're doing some dreaming of cars we can't afford, the Dendrobium D1 is the first in a series by Dendrobium Automotive. The car debuted in 2017 at Geneva and made an appearance at last year's 24 Hours of Le Mans event. I know nothing more about it. Could be vaporware. We wish them the best. Pininfarina Battista. A 1,900 horsepower car from Automobili Pininfarina. 0 to 60, under two seconds. North America had 50 allocated. Half of those have been bought already. $2.5 million price tag. Start looking down the back of the sofa for some spare change. Right, two more. The Aston Martin Rapide E. Now, the Rapide is a car that perhaps is a little bit long in the tooth for some, but it's their first fully electric vehicle from Aston Martin. 612 horsepower, 155 miles an hour, 0 to 64 seconds. In this list, it looks slow. And finally, the Lotus Evia. Although the company haven't released the final specs, it's a Lotus. It's a track car. 2,000 horsepower is the target. 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. Top speed of over 200. It's a Lotus. It's going to be a track car, but going to be great on the road as well. Looking forward to finding out more about all of those cars, especially the ones that were kind of new to me as well. Hey, let's just juggle the order of the stories around. I'm going to bring this next story up the list slightly because I've mentioned new automakers that I hadn't heard of. I've got another one here, Fresco Motors. Have you heard of them? Because I haven't. Fresco Motors a Norwegian. The Norway-based EV startup have unveiled a new electric saloon car, sedan car, with specs that are making me 
suspicious. Well, according to Electrek, it's an all-electric saloon car with a radical design that's reminiscent of the original Model S prototype nose cone, a Chrysler 300 towards the back. It's called the Reverie. The Fresco Motors Reverie will be able to accelerate 0 to 60 in two seconds. Okay, big claim. Top speed of 186. Okay, big claim. And it's going to do that, they say, with an AC induction motor and a four-speed automatic gearbox with what's called overdrive. They're a startup. They say the vehicles come with a wireless charging pad. Can we have a look at one of the vehicles? Apparently not yet. Again, vaporware is a very dismissive, derogatory term. I hate it. It does, though, in a form of shorthand, remind people that some people are building EVs and some people are talking about building EVs. And again, this car has unbelievable specs. A four-speed gearbox in an EV this powerful? Didn't the early Teslas, weren't, was it either the Roadster or Model S? At some point in their past, Tesla have gone down the road of a two-speed gearbox. And when you have such high performance, they just couldn't make or source a gearbox that could cope with the torque. And then they went down to a single-speed uh, gearbox because they couldn't make two-speed work. So, you know, time's moved on, technology's moved on. Good luck to anyone talking about a four-speed gearbox on an EV with those kind of specs. Let's talk about charging. And BP has announced that together with Didi Chuxing, uh, it's going to establish a new joint venture, going to build a charging infrastructure in China, according to Inside EVs. The starting point for the new network will be a pilot station installed by two partners in Guangzhou, equipped with 10 DC fast chargers. They're going to charge between 60 and 120 kilowatts. The plan envisions charging hubs across the country and rapid expansion of the network to meet the needs of the world's largest EV market. New charging stations used both by Didi drivers and the general public. A reminder then how they describe themselves from Didi. They say online, Didi is the world's leading multimodal transportation platform, offering users a full range of app-based options, including ride hailing, automobile solutions, sharing, and other services. Its platform already has 550 million users and 600,000 EVs. Well, I mean, when you say EVs, I should say plug-in cars. But 600,000 plug-in cars on the road in China. I'll pop a link to Inside EVs in the show notes. Well, Volvo Cars, another Chinese company, it needs a regular supply of cobalts because of EV batteries. However, the cobalt that gets all of the attention, and it is a tiny percentage, by the way, of the cobalt used in the world, a tiny, tiny, but it's still too much, is primarily obtained from the Congo, which presents a massive social problem for EV users. Statistically, there was a time when two-thirds of the world's cobalt was from the Congo, according to CoinFin or CoinFine News. Uh, Volvo has since deployed blockchain technology. They use the blockchain to map the source of the cobalt from all of their factories. Moreover, recycled cobalt in China is a source for which Volvo is benefiting to make EVs. Blockchain technology is now being used by Volvo to verify the source of the cobalt. It's joined a project with the government to monitor the cobalt from the Democratic Republic of Congo and, of course, any kind of child labour in the DRC, where cobalt, cobalt comes from, is, of course, something that everybody should be peddling as fast as they can towards completely eliminating. Any big company, it gets thrown in EV drivers' faces a lot, like, oh, where do the rare earth metals come from? We're going to run out after 100,000 cars. We're not, but there is a very genuine concern about a very, very small percentage. And again, a lot of the big car makers that worry about where their materials come from have already changed many of their supply chains. But there are still companies making, I'm not sure about EVs, but certainly in those lithium-ion batteries, that still happens, and we need to get to a solution as quick as possible. It is not acceptable, that situation. And you can say, you know, and mitigate it. Oh, it's in the, it's a tiny percentage in the single figures these days, but still, that's too much. Let's talk Vauxhall, or maybe you would say Opal. They've opened the order books for their first mainstream plug-in hybrid. The Grandland X is a four-wheel drive hybrid, according to Car Scoops. Prices for the new Grandland X start from £35,590 in the UK for the entry level and includes three other grades. The SRI is 40300 the Elite Nav is 42200 and the range-topping Ultimate is 45450 you got 196 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder engine, and you've got two electric motors of 108 horsepower each. 
and that is a 13.2 sorry between them it must be 108 horsepower that otherwise that would be crazy power uh, yeah i imagine that is what 54 horsepower each on the motors 13.2 kilowatt hour battery pack the second electric motor is on the rear axle so you've got four wheel or all wheel drive on the grandland x the front is connected to the engine's eight speed automatic transmission you know that's not a crazy amount of money for a big family car but it is a reminder new cars are expensive £45,450 for the range topping Vauxhall or an Opel Grandland X. It's not the biggest car in the world. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I guess most people just buy their cars on finance these days. That's why I drive small, little, cheaper cars. Just because if you're looking at your monthly payment, then all of a sudden £45,000 doesn't seem like real money, but... It, it really is, isn't it? And it's like, wow, that's so much. And and put that in the perspective of something like a Tesla Model Y that's coming, that'll be pure electric. And for £45,000, well, in my mind, it's a no-brainer, but lots of people aren't ready for full EVs yet, so I get that. We talked about Rimac earlier on today. There's going to be the official debut of the new C underscore 2. With prototypes now in production, the Rimac C2 will take its final shape and first customer's cars will be delivered early next year. Mate Rimac said this. We are very... Is that how I say his name? Mate? I heard someone say it differently and it made me think I've been saying his name wrong all this time. Anyway, Mr. Rimac. Uh, he said, We are very excited to be back at the Salon Privé, uh, celebrating automotive history and bringing a taste of the future. 2012 was when the Concept One was unveiled at Salon Privé, the world's first all electric hypercar. Uh, this time around, the new C2 is going to be on show, but what about the specs for it? Now, it's all confirmed 120 kilowatt hour battery pack, 1.4 megawatts of energy can be pulled from it. Thermal management is off the charts to keep this thing cool. Uh, top speed of 258 miles an hour, 0 to 61.85, 0 to 100 in 4.3. That doesn't make any sense to my brain. 0 to 100 miles an hour, which is 161 k's, 4.3 seconds. It probably takes me 4.3 seconds to say it slowly, like I did just then. And you're doing 100 miles an hour. Instant torque, crazy traction, a unique drivetrain, and even custom-made bespoke tyres to cope with the power. You can even keep accelerating if you want to, all the way through to 186 miles an hour in less than 12 seconds. Doesn't make sense to my head. I can't comprehend it. It's incredible. Well done to all of the engineers who have made a monster. I'll pop a link to you in the show notes if you want to read more. Right, final story. Let's go to the other end of the scale and let's talk about a cheap conversion kit that means you can keep your car longer. Rather than buying a brand new Leaf or a Model 3, what about if you converted your existing car for a, fac a fraction of the price? Well, a French startup Transition 1. Maybe that would be Transition. Or would that be how the Spanish say it? Anyway, Transition 1 has developed a €5,000 kit. It's $5,600, and it's a retrofit for old diesel cars. They're looking at the European market to begin with. According to Digital Trends, the kit is compatible with the Renault Twingo, the Citroën C1, Peugeot 107, Fiat 500, Toyota Igo, and the VW Polo. Most production electric cars lack conventional transmissions because of all the torque, but Transition 1 bolts an electric motor onto the donor car's existing gearbox. The charge port is installed where the filler cap used to be. And I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to find out more. Thank you to myev.com for setting our question of the week this week. As EVs become more popular, do you think there's still a camaraderie amongst EV drivers? Let me know. Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you to 236 patrons of the show. Your generosity keeps me going. If you, over the weekend, want to let me know your thoughts on Question of the Week, I'll read them out Sunday. Saturday is going to be a Saturday special interview all about learning to drive in an EV, which, of course, all kids now will do. There'll be no fossil gobblers in the future. I recommend you check that out. There are 545 previous shows online, but get the new ones before anybody else by hitting that subscribe option on your app or online. It's a free subscription. And it means you get the show first and free and automatically. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>